Here we are with Unit 5, Lesson 2, with our Introduction to Functions. First problem is you're supposed to calculate the output for a rule when you use negative 6 as the input. So the input is negative 6. What happens when you subtract 7 from that? You should get negative 13. So our output is negative 13. You put that right here in the box, and you're all done with that one. On the next one, calculate it. So what we're after with this is we're going to say calculate the output for the rule when you use negative 6 as the input. So negative 6 as the input, it goes into our little function machine. It says square the input, so we're going to take negative 6 and multiply it by itself, which means we'll get negative 6 times negative 6. I think you know the rest of this one. Get your answer right here. On the next one, negative 6 again is our input. So we'll put negative 6 right here, and we're supposed to divide by 3. So we get negative 6 divided by 3. I need the simplified answer. Right here is your output. But put your final answer right there and move on. One more for this one when we're calculating. Maybe another one. We'll see. When negative 6 goes in here, we're going to say negative 6 is the input. Divide the input into 3. What does that mean? Divide the input into 3. I'm going to let you give that one a roll and see what happens. But uh, when we're talking about dividing that input into 3, you might want to think about it as a long division thing and divide the input into 3. Finish that out and come up with and see what you get next. Final one, or the next one that we see here, it says calculate the output for each rule when you use negative 6 as the input. In this case, again, negative 6 for my input. And then it says write pi. So for an example right here, if my input was 32, it would be typed in as 32 pi. So my output is equal to, express pi as pi, negative 6, write pi, negative 6, pi, but please pay attention to this when you put that into your answer here. Pay attention to that. Okay. Looking at your next one, calculate your output for each rule. We're talking about negative 6 as the input. All right, I'm pretty sure we skipped over this one in the homework. I don't think you'll see this problem, but just in case if you do, when we look at this, calculate the output for each rule when you use a negative 6. Uh, when we put negative 6 into this one, what we would be talking about is find the volume of a cube with the side lengths equal to the input in centimeters. Um, so when we're talking about a cube, we're talking about the side lengths of the cube. And we're talking about that we'd have to figure out, find the volume of the cube with the side length equal to the input. So if it's like this, negative 6, that would mean that we have negative 6 for the height, the width, and the length, which would mean negative 6 to the third power. And that's what we'd have to put for our, our output. If the output is no solution, then we write no solution. In this case, uh, the output would actually be negative, which means it's got to be no solution. But I don't think you have that one. For these next several questions, it's all about true and false. Uh, true if this is a function. False if it is not. So a group of students is timed while sprinting 100 meters. Each student spent, or each student's speed can be found by dividing 100 meters by their length by their time. Is each statement true or false? Speed is a function of time, or speed is dependent on time. True or false? Explain. Part C. Time is a function of distance, meaning time depends on the distance. True or false? Explain. Part E, speed is a function of number of students racing. So meaning the speed, or excuse me, speed is dependent on the number of students racing. I don't know so much about that one. That seems kind of fishy to me. But tell me about that's true, false, and why. Time is a function of speed. So time is dependent on how fast a person goes. That seems like a good one to be thinking about. And then final one. Uh, you don't have to do this one, and you're all set with your homework. Uh, 
just want to make sure I'm doing this right. I believe you might have had this last one as well. And so when we look at the tables, this is one I wanted to talk to you about either way. Um, when we talk about looking at these in the table, there's a really easy way to tell if we have a function or not a function. When we look at the function, what we want to look at really closely is the input. And as you can tell on the input, each of these input values are unique numbers. Since they are unique numbers, that would give us a function. Okay. Table B, whoops. We look at those input and output, or excuse me, more specifically the input, and you'll notice that we have a four and another four. We have one and another one. Um, the problem with this is that we're saying four has an output of negative two, but it also has an output of positive two. That can't work because that input of four can only have one output, one unique output. In this case, that four we don't know exactly where it would go to. The same thing with one. One is being assigned the output to one and negative one. And so what we would say with this one, it's not a function. Because the out or inputs four and one have more than one unique output. You'll notice that I wrote that really big. That's because functions cannot have more than one unique output. But here's the thing to take a look at with table C. Notice how all the inputs are different, but the outputs are all the same. This doesn't matter. You can have all of the inputs be different and the outputs be the same, and what happens with it is you end up with this one, with table C, you end up with a graph that is actually the x-axis because all the outputs are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. You get a horizontal line. Whereas with the one on table B, what happens in that one, you end up getting vertical lines through each of these points. So at 1, you have positive 1 and negative 1. And at 4, you have positive two and negative two. And what happens is you end up with a vertical line and a vertical line and vertical lines are never ever functions. Okay, they're never functions because that means that the input has multiple output values and we have a discrepancy between what the output between the dependent variable. So we're saying two, negative two depends on four, but we're also saying two depends on four and that can't be true in a function. Zero can't depend on three different inputs, or can depend on three different inputs. But when we look at the next one, letter D, one, two, and three can't all depend on the exact same input. So letter D is also not a function. Letter C is a function. One other way to observe these is like this. We have what's called, um, oh my goodness, a, what's called a mapping, where you can look at your input and your output. And that map would show you the input values. In this case, I'm gonna do letter C, input values are one, two, and three, and the output values are all zero. So this is just fine. This is a function. But when you flip it around and you say your input is zero, but your output is one, two, and three, this can't be because then there can be some confusion about what your output, which output is actually representing the input that that dependent value is dependent on just one independent. Um, pay attention to that piece. Input values, if they're all different, it's a function. If the input values are all the same or they are repeated, right, like right here, four, four, one, and one, and they have different output values, then we know that that is going to be not a function. So, sorry that's a big mess, but that's it for your homework. That's it for the lesson, and I uh, hope it helps.
have a great day.